Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Today, I'm finally getting around to using some awesome materials that I picked up in 2020. This is the Rebel Lace that is inspired by some 16th and 17th century designs that was made by DSA Threads. Um, Amber over at DSA Threads is an awesome creator. I'm gonna link her information down in the description in case you want to check it out. As a heads up, this is not sponsored by her or her company or anything like that. It's just me having some fun with a really cool product. But what I love about this is her overall information on how it works. Basically, she's gonna go through and do embroidery on this water-soluble interfacing. And then after the interfacing dissolves in the water, all you're left with is this gorgeous lace. It's allowed her to be able to do a lot more historical pieces and some of these pieces that would take us forever to try and reproduce. So that's what we're playing with today. Some tips that I got when I was looking to start working on it was cut away as much of the excess interfacing as you can. That way it actually dissolves a little bit faster and you're not having to deal with that chemical in the water possibly making the lace stiffer than you were wanting. A couple other quick bits that you need to keep in mind. Please make sure that you don't cut any of the threads that are holding your lace together. You want to make sure that those stay intact so that your lace stays intact. I'd hate to see any of your lace unravel or do anything like that because you got a little too close with scissors. You can give this stuff a pretty decent width to keep oh, your scissors away. That way you avoid that process. It's all going to dissolve in the water anyway and it dissolves faster when it's not directly connected to the lace itself. I just love the detail that she has in this. So first things first, you're gonna want to fill a sink with some hot water. I'm doing this in a bathroom sink rather than in a basin or something, so that if the water cools off and isn't dissolving the glue and the interfacing from the lace as quickly as I would like, I can always refill that and get some more hot water going. So once you've got your sink full of water, make sure to gently drop in your lace. That way you can just watch the really cool science of all of the interfacing dissolving out. I didn't really pay much attention to how long this took, and that's probably going to vary a bit depending on how much water you're using, the temperature of it, how densely stitched the piece of lace is gonna be. So I just did it by sort of a tactile feel factor for roughly how stiff do I want the lace? Because if it's stiffer, you have to block it less, which is probably better for the lace in the long term. So I let mine stay a little bit crunchier, but at the same time, I wanted to get as much of the stuff disconnected as I could. There's going to be some spots on the strips that I left connected and didn't cut apart that now that it's dissolved, I'm going to cut those apart. You could probably wait and do this when they're dry. I just wanted to do it now so I could get a better idea of how much lace I really had. So I did the math, but it, it was kind of nice to be able to see it. So you don't necessarily have to dry everything right next to the sink. I found it easier with my mobility issues at the time I was working on this project to just have it right there. But if you want to do a bunch of lace at once and set up a separate table, by all means, set that up, put your towel on there. I ended up doing a couple sessions of this to get all of the lace to dissolve off of the interfacing and make sure I had enough room to have it drying. Isn't this a cool parlor trick though? I don't think I'll ever get sick of watching the lace dissolve in the water. So brilliant plan for doing this this way, Amber. Kudos if you ever watch this video. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to notice that I start agitating the lace just a bit. That's what I ended up doing a bit more when the water was starting to cool off. Thanks time lapse for making this seem like it was way less time than it took. But that's one way you can kind of get things moving around short of adding more hot water. I would just be careful if, if you're doing it not to have rings or anything like that and don't have jagged edges on your nails that might catch a string and pull it weird. And now you see the real reason why I was trying to cut them apart at this point. They get to be a little bit tangled up, in my opinion at least, so it was way easier for me to lay them out and get them flat when I got the different strands of lace disconnected from each other. Um, the lace did come three to a sheet when for the particular design that I got, and I think it was like 12 or something inches long. I'd have to go and double check again on my invoice. But it just made it a little bit easier for me to try and get everything to lay out. You don't want to do multiple layers of lace on top of each other while it's drying. Cause I noticed it was trying to curl a bit when I did that briefly. Make sure everything stays on a single level. If your points keep sticking up after they're done drying, you might check and see what the fiber content looks like. I got the cotton version of the lace and so I was able to use a low iron and a pressing cloth to get all of my points to sit flat the way I wanted. And then I rinse repeated the cycle over and over again, get the hot water, drain out anything, especially if the water started to feel weird from the interfacing, and drop more of the lace in. Eventually I have enough of this lace prepped and dissolved from its interfacing to be able to make a cute little ruff. I've always wanted one and I really am so happy with the way this lace is turning out from this particular process. I don't think I would ever have the skill to do something quite that intricate on my own. So I was more than happy to get this from Amber. But I'm going to be working on a rough over the next few days. And I hope you are having a fantastic week. Thank you for watching. And in the next video, you're going to get to see how that rough went together. And sort of the multi-month journey that this project ended up taking on. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit the like button. Definitely subscribe if you want to see more content or how that Rebel Rough ends up looking. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.